Hi everyone, I hope you are doing well. So today we are going to see how to create a shockwave and above all how to create an infinite loop that you can control very easily. I first want to say that this tutorial is inspired by the effect of Redefine FX, which I really want to notify, but the addition of the loop is a very cool bonus. You can of course find this complete project on Patreon, like all my other projects. Ok, we start now. Ok, so now we are into this max and the first thing I'm going to do is to create a plane. So, aeroplane. 20 by 20 for the subdivision maybe 100 by 150 okay I cannot add an edit poly go to edge selection I cannot select one edge this one go here to poly modeling generate topology and select this one okay Perfect. I will now create a Typhlo setup. Open editor. Create a bus object. And pick my plane one. Okay, I can hide the plane and just keep the Typhlo. I will now add a face fracture. Go to polygon mode. And face to one variation to zero. I will now add a scale. With a value of 97, I think. OK. And I will now add a shell. Outer to one. And inner to one. OK. I think it's good like this. Now what we want to do is to activate this type of setup, so I will create a sphere, like this, above the plane, and I will now animate the sphere. So, auto key, and to frame 50, I will go here. Okay, perfect. I can now just decrease the sphere radius. 0 0.1, I think, would be good. Okay, perfect. I can hide the sphere, go back to my Typhlo setup, and I will add a send out. Okay. I will now duplicate the display, change the color, this one, like this, and link the send out to the event 2. And now you can see that all the operators we create here are activated in this event. OK. I will now add a surface test. Pick my sphere 1. Duplicate again the display and link the surface test to this event. I will now change the color, blue, and if I go forward in the animation, you can see here that the activation works. It's great. I can just decrease the value, maybe 0.2. Okay, now what we want to do is to create a colonization for this dark blue. So I will add here a property test. Property test. Test type to neighbors, here neighbors. I cannot select greater than a value of zero. Okay, I cannot go down in the menu and select a simulation group. You can, of course, select the number you want. For me, it will be two. And I will now add in this event a particle group with the same value, two. I can now link the property test to the particle group. Oh, OK, here is a problem. It's not less or equal, it's greater. OK. OK. It's perfect. I can. Of course, decrease the speed here in the property test with the radius, maybe 
zero point four. Great, you can of course add the noise, five maybe, maybe up the frequency to one, the strength to 0 0.2, now what I want to do is to start creating my shockwave, so I will add a spread, for the spread, no randomization, 0, 0, 0, just up a bit, position of set in the z-axis, 0.1. I can now change the timing to continuous. I will move a bit the camera, and now you can see the effect here. I can up again the position of set in the z-axis, like this. Okay. I think it's great like this. I can add a bit round of spread, 0 0.12, okay, I think it's really cool like this. Now what I want for the shockwave is to go back to my original position, so I will go back in my event 2 and create a custom properties. Custom properties here, go down in the menu, go to custom tm, Select TM and save the channel, maybe position. Okay. I can now create here a time test. No variation and maybe a value of five. So I want to go back to my original position after five frames. I will now add a fine target, link the time test to the fine target. For the target object, I will pick the plane one. I will change the color, maybe yellow. And for the target alignment, I will select custom TM with my channel position. I will now just up a bit the acceleration, 15, and decrease the velocity, 0 0.2. Okay. Okay. I can maybe decrease a bit the randomness in the spread, maybe 0 0.05. Okay. Go back to the fine target, velocity to 115. And I think it will be good like this. I will now switch to clay mode to better see my animation. And I will now up my number of frame. Okay. And now you can see the shockwave. It's really cool like this. I can of course go back to the time flow and change the value. Maybe change the time test for the shockwave. Maybe after 7 frames. I can of course go back to the spread and change the value. 0.2. It's up to you to play with all this value to create the look you want for your shockwave. Okay. Let's see. Okay, so now we have our shockwave, and now what we want to do is to create the loop. So I will go back to type flow, and here in the find target, I will create another time test. Time test here, and I will now link this time test to the event 2, like this. I can create another point here. And now all you have to do is just to play with this value. I will set the variation to zero, maybe the value to 70, and let's see.
it's really cool. I can go back to type flow and of course change the value, maybe 40, if I want less time between two shockwaves. Really cool like this. Or change the value. If I want more time, maybe 100. So you have basically all the key to create a shockwave and or to loop your shockwave to the infinite just by playing with the time test you see here. You can decrease the value if you want shockwave with a lot of repetition and a short time between the loop or up the value if you want more time between two loops. Okay guys, so it's over for this tutorial. I hope you've learned a lot of things. Don't forget the thumb up and to subscribe if you like my work. You can of course find the complete scene for this project on Patreon and you can follow me on Instagram or Beyond if you want. See you soon for the next tutorial, guys. Bye.